Hassan Kalia. I'm a professor in the Department of Art and Architecture. I also co-direct the Center for Research, Artistic and Scholarly Excellence, which is C-R-A-S-E, uh, also called CRAES. And so, uh, you know, CRAES is a university-wide center that is dedicated to supporting, promoting, and disseminating faculty scholarship and creative work. And so we're absolutely delighted to be co-sponsoring this event uh, with the Thatcher Gallery and promoting the, the creative part of our faculty's work. So that's nice. And so I was just going to say that, you know, when you look at uh, most exhibitions that have a title like a triennial or a biennial, it typically comes with, you know, 10, 20, and 15, something like that. But this is just the Art and Architecture Triennial. And this is because uh, a few years ago we were downgraded from being a triennial from being a biennial to a triangle. So we went from being once every two years to once being every three years. And I was mentioning this to Glory Simmons, our awesome director of the Thatcher Gallery. And she told me that when she was at one of the meetings of the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, AGCU, uh, and she was talking to the other art directors from the other galleries, or the directors of the other galleries, and they said that they were surprised that we even had a faculty show. So, you know, it's awesome that we have one. And uh, I want to say a thank you, Glory, for organizing this uh, exhibition, having this triennial, and for supporting our faculty. So thank you very much for that. And I want to thank uh, everybody else also who, who helped with this exhibition. Uh, Mela Lisner, uh, Alexa Ortiz, uh, Mary Lou Grace Robinson, Chris Whitty, uh, Lex Callum and all of the students in the Thatcher practicum. Uh, we also have uh, Giacomo uh, Fiore, uh, who's going to be playing for us tonight. Uh, thank you, Giacomo. Uh, our wonderful program assistants, <coughs> Joanna Medina and Sarah Schweitzer, thank you very much. Uh, and the amazing uh, Victoria Farlow. So thanks to all of you. So we have a, a terrific uh, exhibition up here. Today. And uh, there's work from some of our new faculty in the department, uh, some of our long term faculty as well, a long time faculty, I should say. And uh, we have a few of our exhibiting archi uh, artists and uh, faculty who are going to speak today. And I have the pleasure to introduce them. So, shall we start with that? Okay, so first uh, we have Matt Peek. Matt, hey, thanks. Uh, Matt's work is up here. And Matt's going to just speak to us. Uh, for a little bit, I'm just going to introduce Matt very quickly. Matt, uh, Matt Peek studied architecture and urban design and fine art at Berkeley, Columbia, and Yale uh, with a Fulbright at the University of Venice. He's the principal of Studio Peak and Kona, which is a research and design firm combining architecture, planning, and interiors. Uh, he's licensed on both coasts and a member of the American Institute of Architects, and he's a contributor to uh, international journals of architecture. Um, and Matthew's work, Matthew Peake's work, uh, investigates the use of cutting edge natural and composite materials, ranging from new uses of renewable materials to the most recent lightweight tree fat and high tech structures. Um, and uh, his work has been recognized internationally through publications, competitions, and honors, including AIA California and New Jersey Design Awards. Uh, Matt began teaching while working abroad in Italy in the late 1980s, 1990s, sorry, and then at the University of California, Berkeley. And since 2007, he's been at USC. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Donald. Well, I don't have to repeat all that. That was perfect. Um, I am a practicing architect and professor. Uh, I've never talked about my art before, so uh, when I thought about this exhibition, I think we did want to speak to our younger selves. I have been sketching all my life. Um, during COVID, I sketched a lot more. Uh, but realistically, I had tons of architectural work during COVID. So it was sort of night and day work, people moving out of the city, especially New York City. Uh, but I, I sort of forced myself to sit down for minimum 20 minutes a day and sketch, because that's really the origin of my architectural work. And as an architect, it can be very frustrating. You have to get up uh, in court hearings, planning commissions, defend your clients. There's a lot of stuff that uh, I never I tell my students. Um, but for that reason, 
the sketching is probably the most important thing to me. So, I don't know if you can all see. I wonder yeah, if come you want to come closer. <laughs> So there are about a dozen sketches here, and I think they probably start in 2017. And I didn't lay them out, but I love how they're laid out because they're actually kind of organized chronologically and how I build up to projects that are now under construction on the upper right. So I'll just walk you through them one by one. I know I only have sort of five or eight minutes, whatever the time frame is, so I'll try to be quick. But there are definitely layers that are architectural, uh, spiritual, political, uh, psychological. I definitely won't talk about the psychological stuff, but I can talk about some of the uh, historic and sort of um, abstract elements in them. So uh, I do have a Fulbright, and um, I always encourage my students to apply for that. It, it paid for a year, almost two years of, of living in Italy. I ended up living there for uh, six years. So the first is a sketch of Rome. I'm very interested in public space and how architecture uh, supports people and uh, cities. And so on the right is uh, one of the open spaces designed by the Pope Sixtus V uh, with a Roman obelisk um, and, uh, and a church in the background and the Baroque Spanish steps in the foreground. The second one is just a block away from where I lived in Florence, uh, Santa Croce, um, which was a, a originally probably a Franciscan church. Uh, and then the facade actually is interesting because you're in this sort of Renaissance city, but then you look at it and it's actually a, a sort of late neo-Gothic uh, facade um, designed by a Jewish architect actually, who was not allowed to be buried in the church, but is, is buried under the threshold of, of the entry, interestingly enough. So you'll see a star of David just above um, the rose window. Then these drawings, these four are definitely during COVID. This is when I sort of turned to my art books I'm always surrounded by a sort of art history. And let's see, what do I have here? I have uh, St. George um, killing the dragon. Um, then I have the, the, the Tribune Tower in the background. So uh, St. George was sort of a, a crusader saint. Um, I mean, there are different levels to that, but really this was about freeing people from the dragon. In my mind, it was about freeing us from COVID. So, you know, perhaps uh, we could be, we, our scientists as knights could sort of uh, defeat this sort of existential threat. Um, moving on, uh, I think I was thinking about the fall of the giants when I drew this, but I have a, a large book of uh, Michelangelo's The Last Judgment. So this idea of this sort of existential threat that was facing us, I actually overlaid on a background of sort of idealistic architectural plans, um, ranging from um, sort of uh, idealized churches, um, to actually the Phillips Exeter Library, which is inspired, I like the music in the background, but anyway, <laughs> the, the uh, uh, Phillips Exeter Library and some buildings by John Higdick. Uh, moving forward, um, this is kind of interesting, this turns out to be all Hellenism, and, and what I find fascinating about my drawings, is I give myself about five minutes to get all of the paperwork and books around me, and then I start looking at these compositional sketches, and I realized later what they're about. So this is actually about Hellenism. I didn't realize it at the time. Um, the top piece is a sketch of uh, Pergamon, the lower Agora, and the, the lower is uh, Petra, um, which is a sort of the outer uh, reaches of, of, of the Hellenistic um, uh, areas. But of course, you know, excavated into the stone, and that's what the cross hatching suggests is, is this church excavating the stone. And then a Hellenistic sculpture um, uh, of Pan actually found um, in the House of the Fawn in Pompeii. Moving forward, you'll see that these things are, are sort of connected uh, religiously. I probably won't talk about that either, but um, sort of history, religion, architecture. Next, we move into uh, Romanticism. And again, at the time, I didn't think about it, but I, I was looking at the origins of Romanticism being Piranesi's prisons in the background with uh, Delacroix's um, uh, Turkish officer in the foreground. Um, this interest in, this interest in uh, different peoples, faraway lands, and this sort of fantastic imagery. And it, the reason why I draw these people is sort of self-serving for the architecture as well. You know, we have these regimented ways of drawing computers, our clients ask us for all 90 degree angles to, for efficient construction budgets. At a certain point, you can't draw anymore. So I love drawing figures, it loosens me up. Um, 
So that's why I look at uh, artists like Delacroix as well, just for sort of uh, technical uh, means. So that's a sort of undercurrent of what I love doing in my free time. Um, you know, just to draw a house takes probably 500 hours, so um, each one of these sketches uh, is just as meaningful, um, but occurs in a very short amount of time. What's interesting about the prisons, though, is that if you really look into the political um, and sort of depths of, of these images, um, there was an explosion of, of prison building, um, I think in the late 1700s, to the point where we are today, that probably 1% of our population at least is, is incarcerated. And prisons used to be a sort of holding place before punishment, but Pierre Nazi was actually very critical of this idea of prisons as punishment. So that's what these drawings are about. So moving forward in this sort of more utopian realm, which is uh, why I teach how to make better cities and uh, sort of mixed use communities. Um, early on in COVID, when we had to teach online, it, it was so difficult for me because I teach through sketching. I teach with students, I'm moving my hands around, we're, we're learning from doing. And I realized, although I could speak with them and I could lecture quite easily on Zoom, I couldn't visually communicate. So I started sketching the exercises that I gave my students. So one of them is the uh, sort of empty uh, Trans Bay bus terminal called the East Cut, uh, not too far from the beautiful Trans Bay terminal with the garden on top. And so I put a program of a sort of museum of regeneration, how to rebuild the city after COVID. And so I have this section of a building, a very high density building, a vertical promenade, this idea of getting people back into pedestrian space. It's amazing how I work in New York, so I, I go there every month or two. Um, you know, New York really rebounded within probably eight or nine months, and San Francisco were facing 30% uh, of the offices uh, still empty. So how do we build better buildings for people downtown? Um, then I have a self-portrait, that's a cubist self-portrait. I teach a class on art and architecture, and so I use elements from Brock and Picasso, even Corbusier. Um, and then the last three are my architectural drawings, and that's actually how I design. Uh, the last one on the right is actually a building that's almost complete uh, in New Jersey. It's a hurricane-resistant house. You can see it's a very simple, minimalist plan, um, but I'm also sort of with my hand there on the side sketching the landscape. The one to the left of that is three blocks away. Um, it's actually a house addition. It's one of the most complex plans that the owner wants to keep his existing house, and we're coming up with this uh, wrapping system that envelops the existing house. And that's inspired by, by cubism and, and Piranesi's prisons and, and all of these historical drawings that I'm doing. Um, and lastly, a, a new project is another house. I go through 50 different uh, sort of house plans before I come up with the final one, working with the client. Um, and so here's a, a three by four, so 12 potential plans for the same house. So I think, I'm not sure what I wrote, but I, I think as a, as a summary, what I was thinking when asked these questions for this exhibit, what advice would I give to my younger self? Um, you know, in the 1980s, I was trained to be sort of uh, an extrovert, sort of competitive, all these things which I actually don't like and are not really me is interesting. And I found that through COVID, I was very comfortable being introverted. And that's actually where the power of um, my creativity comes from is, is, is looking at history, becoming one with history, and looking towards the future and going deep within and seeing how I can collaborate with communities to make more beautiful places. Thank you.